fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, now that school's out, I bet your whole day is spent in the fresh outdoors. And that's when a delicious snack like a big slice of chocolate devil's food cake and a cold glass of milk tastes extra good. So easy with Betty Crocker devil's food cake mix, you can bake it yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the package. Ingredients like famous soft as silk cake flour, pure vegetable shortening, and rich chocolate flavoring. You simply add water and two fresh eggs, beat and bake for a perfect cake every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Absolutely perfect. Or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for your money back. And why not have Betty Crocker Devil's Food Cake with any one of your favorite ice creams? Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker Cake Mix on hand. And someday soon, why not bake up a cake for her? With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask writer of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! A number of men from England and Canada went into the pioneer west in search of fortune and adventure. Some remained there to become settlers and citizens, and others returned to their native land. But there were two who turned outlaws. They were known as Sid Gordon and Woody Oaks. A stagecoach with a strong box lashed to the top was rolling south across the Nebraska plain when Sid Gordon and Woody Oaks stepped from a thicket and opened fire into the air. Stop those horses. You guys, drop your shotgun. I'm stopping. Hold oh, on. Go. After disarming the guard and driver and sending them on their way on foot, the highwaymen broke open the strong box and found it filled with small canvas sacks containing English gold coins. The outlaw known as Woody said, Blimey, Sid. Do you see these coins? English sovereigns. According to this paper, the gold was on its way from Canada to Frisco to be shipped overseas to the Sultan of a colony. Well, we don't dare risk spending this kind of money. We can spend it without danger in Canada. But stow the gold in our saddlebag. Right. The holdup, which involved international relations, was given wide publicity. Hundreds of law enforcement officers and private investigators entered the case. But after weeks of feverish activity, all admitted failure except two men. Two men who followed the almost imperceptible trail the others had lost. They were the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Their pursuit of the fleeing outlaws had taken them into an isolated part of Dakota Territory. As they rode through the almost uninhabited region, Tonto kept his keen eyes fixed on the ground. He was saying... It's bad. They're no description of crooks. At least we have a description of their horses. We know they're the famous Morgan breed. Uh, trail clear now, Kimasabi. Maybe we go faster. This is another chance to gain on them. One, two, three. Let's go. Meanwhile, the outlaws had reached a ranch near the edge of the Dakota Badlands. Their weary horses stood near a small corral behind the ranch house, heads drooping. Woody and Sid, themselves almost exhausted, sat on a nearby boulder while they talked to the owner of the place. 
He was a tall, hatchet-faced man with shrewd eyes. He had studied the two men and now had his eyes on their tired horses. You must have been riding lightning to leather. Right. We need fresh mounts. You came to the right place. I'm Yank Martin, and I deal in horses. I happen to have two handsome mares right here in this corral. See them? They look all right from here. Want to trade them for our thoroughbred Morgans? Your horses are plumb done out. They're thin. They're... All they need is rest. They'll be fit as ever in a couple of days. How come he didn't rest them? We didn't dare stop. We're being followed by outlaws. A masked man and an engine. But we've outwitted them temporarily. Uh, why are they after you? Yank, you look like an honest rancher, so I'll tell you the truth. We're Englishmen who want to buy a ranch. And we're carrying a considerable amount of money. Oh. I'm going up the hill and watch our back trail through field glasses. Those crooks may be closing in. Good idea, sir. Hey, about that horse deal, I'll swap with you for uh, $300 to boot. Oh, I'll give you 200 though that's too much. I happen to have a sack of English sovereigns equal to that much in dollars. Let's see it. Woody produced one of the bags of stolen money he had kept in a pocket and counted out the contents. As the outlaw returned the gold coins to the sack, Yank Martin's eyes glittered. It's a deal. I'll trot out the horses. They'll have to be sound. All my saddle stock is sound. Woody, I saw the masked man in Indian. They're still a mile or so away, but they're headed this way. You hear that, Yank? Hurry with those horses. I'm bringing them out. Hey, Joe, uh, where are my other riders? You let them go to town, you sir. Never mind what I said. Saddle two good horses and get fixed to do some shooting. We'll be riding as soon as I take care of these gents. All right. Come on here. Here are the horses, gents. Want to look into their mouths and punch their ribs? There's no time for that. They look all right. I'll help you change your saddle to these horses. Then I'll turn your nags into the corral. We'll do that ourselves. Now, here's the money. Now, you'd better join your men and meet those outlaws. We'd stay to help you, but we don't know how to shoot these guns we're carrying. <laughs> you Englishmen have a lot to learn. Yeah, a lot to learn. The buildings of Yank Martin's ranch were some distance away and beyond a small hill, so they were unseen by the Lone Ranger and Toto when they drew rein beside a high-fenced corral made of posts set firmly in the ground and fitted together so closely that the masked man and his Indian companion could see little by peering between them. There are horses inside, Toto, but I can't tell whether the outlaws are heading there or not. Gate fastened with chain lock. I'm going to look over the top. Come on. Come, Scout. Come, Papa. Oh, oh, plenty high. I think we'll be able to see over the top by standing on our saddles. Oh, I just love to meet Sammy. I've never seen a corral like this. It's almost like a stockade. We see only horses inside. Why them in place like this? I don't know. We we'll climb over the top, drop to the ground inside, and maybe we'll be able to find out. Uh, but how we get out? I'll throw my rope over. One end's tied to the saddle horn. <laughs> there. When we're ready to leave, we'll climb the rope from the other side. Oh, be savage. The Lone Ranger and Tonto examining the strange horses inside the high wall didn't suspect that Yank Martin and one of his men were approaching from the ranch buildings. After looking at several of the horses, Tonto said, Outlaws Morgan horses not here. No good horses here. You're right, Tonto. The operator of this place has used every trick I've ever heard of to fool horse buyers. Ah. He's even treated them for lameness. Uh, that why legs wrapped in cloth? Yes. Someone around here is a crackerjack at doctoring horses to overcome lameness till the buyer is out of sight. I'd like to know more about this place, Tonto. But first, we must recover the English gold. We climb rope now? Yes. I'll go first. The Lone Ranger went up the rope hand over hand until he could grip the top of the wall. As he drew himself up, two men on the outside fired. The masked man's hat flew from his head. He dropped back inside the pen. You hurt Kimasabi? No, but that was close. Two men fired at me. It must be outlaws. Whoever they are, they have us trapped. Kimasabi? Yes. We hear more horses coming. Yes. Yo, here comes the federal marshal and his deputy. Yeah, I see him. The marshal taught us. Oh, 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 oh. Steady. What 
What's going on, Yank Martin? You're just in time, Marshal. We've got two owl hoops trapped in there. They think we're outlaws. Uh. You know better than a horse thief yourself, Yank. Who'd want to steal your crow bait? That's not the point. A masked man and engine are in there. These are their horses. You fellas inside. I'm a federal marshal. We're on your side of the law, Marshal. What are you doing inside that stockade? Learning how a crooked horse trader operates. You want to surrender? Or do we have to open the gate and come in shooting? We'll climb out if you'll hold your fire. Then come on. Climb over one at a time. You'll be covered, so don't try any tricks. All right. We're coming over. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Pull back, Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow... Tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger went over the wall first, then stood quietly with his hands at shoulder level until Toto was at his side. The marshal and his deputy held their guns steady, while Yank Martin and his ranch hand stood nearby. Yank said, Take their guns, marshal, and make that critter take off his mask. Oh, shut up, Yank. Mister, you own that white stallion? Yes. Has the horse got a name? Yes, I call him Silver. Uh Uh-huh. What do people call you? The Lone Ranger. (laughs) I suspected as much. What's your name, Angel? Me, Tonto. That checks. May I lower my hands and coil my rope? Sure thing, sure thing. And while you're doing it, tell me why you're here. Todd and I have been trailing two outlaws who stole a shipment of gold belonging to the English government. And the Nebraska stage robbers. I've been trying to cut their trail sign myself. That's why my deputy and I came here when we heard shooting. The trail led us to the swindler's ranch. Don't call me a swindler. Anything's fair in horse trading. I'm within the law. That's a matter of opinion. I think your trick should be exposed. I want to hear more about those stage robbers. Their trail led us here, Marshal, and continues on over that hill. Well, Yanks, buildings, and regular corral are over there. It may be worthwhile to look around. I'm sure those crooks needed fresh horses when they reached here. Show me the tracks of the outlaw's horse. Very well, step over this way. Yank knew he'd be in trouble when the Marshal found the Morgan horses of the outlaws. As he watched the masked man and Indian show the lawman the outlaw's tracks a few yards away... He had a sudden idea. He turned to his ranch hand. Joe, take this bag of money I got for those horses and put it into the masked man's saddlebag. Anything you say, boss. Taking the bag of stolen gold pieces from the horse trader, Joe moved to Silver's side unnoticed as Yank placed himself in front of the marshal. How do you know this gent's really the Lone Ranger? What do you mean? He could have killed the Lone Ranger, stolen his horse, mask, and guns. Before you search my place, search him. That's only fair. Well, it's funny hearing you talk about fair play, Yank. But you've got a point. Mister? Go ahead, Marshal. Search us in our gear. Well, it seems kind of foolish to me, but we'll start with the horses. Deputy, you look through the engine's gear. I'll see what the white horse is carrying. Right, Marshal. With practiced hands, the Federal Marshal went through the Lone Ranger's bedroll and one of the saddlebags. Then he opened the other and felt inside. His hand came out with a small canvas bag whose contents jingled. Well, thunderation. It says Bank of England on this bag. It's filled with English gold pieces. Didn't I tell you? He's not the Lone Ranger. He and the engine stole the gold. Deputy, cover those crooks. I'll hang on to this money. The deputy's hand dropped to his gun. Yank and Joe had their revolvers almost out of their holsters. But the Lone Ranger and Toto had already drawn their Colts. And the muzzles were lined on the others. Steady, all of you. 
Somebody's tried to frame me. You crook, I've crossed him with a good. Toto, take their guns. Uh, me get them. You'll pay for this. Have you all the guns, Toto? Uh, me got them. We'll leave them at the ranch house. We'll meet again, Marshal. You'll meet a bullet, mister. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Marshal! Racing to the horse trader's house, the Lone Ranger and Tonto quickly inspected it and other buildings. All were deserted. Then they went beyond to the corral. Look, Kimasabi. They're outlaws' horses. The robbers traded horses here. That's right. They must have used the English gold to complete the deal. Now, me savvy, why stolen money in your saddlebag? Horse trader or his man put it there. If the robbers took any of his old, worn-out horses in the trade, they might get far. Oh, Prince, here by fence, show where horses were chained. Two from Corral head west to Badlands. All right, easy, 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 easy fella. We'll follow them. Tracks still plenty fresh. Oh, A few minutes later, the men the Lone Ranger and Toto disarmed reached the ranch house. They found their guns where the masked man left them. The furious marshal and his deputy rode on, hoping to overtake the men they now believe to be the much-sought stage robbers. As they rode out of sight, Yank laughed. <laughs> Joe, this is the best trick I ever pulled. How's that, boss? The Lone Ranger and the engine are on the run from the marshal. I've got those English gold thieves mounted on horses that'll soon give out. Well, what about it? The stage robbers have got to keep traveling, and they'll need horses. Yeah. This is the only place within a 50-mile radius where they can get them. There's not even a ranch where they could steal them. So they'll have to come back here for their Morgans. You're right, Yank. We'll just sit tight, and they'll walk right into our hands. Then we'll get all the English gold. Boss, I wish I had a gun that worked as fast as your brain. <laughs> I <laughs> use like everything. Oh, there. Oh, oh. You see any help? Meanwhile, Woody and Sid had halted their flight on the Badlands a few miles away. The horses traded to them had already gone lame and were limping badly. Examining the animals, Woody vowed vengeance. A smart old enough man never kills unless he's forced to. But I'm going back and plug that crooked horse trader. Use your head, Woody. We'll go back, but not for a couple of days. By that time, our Morgans will be rested and we can use them again. This is a safe place to hide, meantime. We left a clear trail from Yank's place. With these crow baits, that couldn't be helped. But we'll watch our back trail. And if the masked man comes close, we'll dry gulch him and his partner. Besides, look at those clouds. We're in for a storm that'll wash out all trail sign. Yeah. We'll be safe enough, Woody. The storm Sid anticipated soon broke, lashing the region with rain and wind and turning dry washes into raging rivers. It temporarily ended the Lone Ranger's search for the outlaws and the marshal's hunt for the Lone Ranger. Much to Yank Martin's disgust, the federal officer and his deputy returned to the ranch. But on the second day, when the weather cleared, they rode away to resume their pursuit of the masked man. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had watched Yank's place from a well-concealed camp on a hill within spyglass distance. That night, Yank and Joe were alone in the ranch house. Joe was asking... Boss, why'd you let the other boys go to town again? I didn't want them around when the outlaws walk into our trap. They'd want a split of the gold. You figure they'll come tonight? Yeah, the marshal and the deputy are gone for good, I hope. The lone ranger will lead them a merry chase. So the coast is clear for the gold thieves to come back after the Morgans. What'll I do? Guard the corral. I'll be hiding in here with my gun ready. Listen. I heard a noise outside. You better blow out the light. But I didn't hear anything. Did you leave that west window open? I never opened it. Well, it's open now. Please, you fool. Don't, don't, don't shoot. Keep them covered, Sid. I'm climbing in. How would you like to swap two mortgages for your life, horse? Don't Can't kill me. Take the horse. I'm taking your guns first. Oh, there. That does for you. And that for you. Come on in, Sid. Right. From what I overheard, it sounds like you were expecting us, Yank. Only we came too soon. Don't shoot us. We're not going to shoot you. No, 
No. We're going to tie you to the backs of those phony old nags after we saddle our Morgan. No, no. Then we'll take you into the Badlands and run the horses over a cliff. No, no, I'll make everything all right. No deal, Yank. You're coming with us. Come on. What are you staring at, Joe? The masked man and engine. They're behind you. Look. (laughs) You'll have to think of something better than that old trick to make us turn our heads. Don't turn. Just drop those guns. I told you, it's him. He's here. Drop your guns. Not for you. Get him, Woody. I'm giving up. Uh, me get guns. Oh, you you saved our lives, mister. But how'd you get here? We've been watching this place since you tried to frame me. Like you, we expected the gold thieves to return. They were just outside the house when they crawled uh, in. I want to thank you. Don't thank me for anything, Yank. You'd have murdered these robbers for their stolen gold. They'd have murdered me. You heard I've me. heard enough from you. What's going on here? We're holding the stage robbers for you, Marshal. You'll find the English government's gold on two tired, lame horses standing by the corral. I've already found it, mister. The Morgan horses they rode when we trailed them to this ranch are inside the corral. I know that now. Should have known in the first place that Yank tried to frame me. The money I found in your saddlebag was planted there. Yank swindled the robbers out of it in a trade for those broken-down horses. That polecat, I'll you get him. You stand still. Handcuff him, deputy. Right. That crook, he ain't Martin or the swing. Just put him in the same cell with us. That's all I want. We've no case against him that it's stick and court. Yeah, yeah, of course you haven't. The law can't touch me. But I can. M- Marshal, he's going to hit me. Well, you have this to defend yourself. No, no. That's for using honest old horses in your fraud. Hit him again. Hit him for us. He's down. He's had enough. Marshal, you have your prisoners and the gold's been recovered. Well, mister... What you've done should show the English government that while we've got crooks in the West, we've likewise got the men to catch the crooks. Adios. <laughs> Adios and thanks. Marshal, who is that masked man? We shook everyone but him and the Indian off our trail. Yes, he's a hard man to get away from. And a harder one to catch, as I should know. <laughs> he's the Lone Ranger. I'll still, uh, Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.